In today's world, when you want a car that can do everything, be practical, be stylish, be something of a status symbol, and ultimately be the best possible family car to cart you and your children around, more often than not, you will arrive at an SUV. Today's SUVs are very good, and that's why they can do everything. But back in 1976, that wasn't really the case, because back then, if you wanted a car that was practical, stylish, and sporty, something that could really set your heart on fire, it would have come in the form of a hot hatch. This, then, is the Volkswagen Golf GTI, the eighth generation model, and this car is for the individuals. <laughs> Now, the reason why I say this car is for the individuals is mostly because of how it presents itself, and that starts with the exterior. These very expressive full LED IQ lights are very pretty, and they are set off in the middle with this red bar that goes across, which beautifully complements the GTI badge down the side. Like all new Volkswagens, you do get an LED light bar that stretches all the way across when the lights are on. Unfortunately for Malaysia, however, we do not get the very pretty checkered flag fog lights that would have sat down in the honeycomb grill. Now, rather unfortunately, because the Golf is also available in this country as an R-Line model, it does look pretty similar. The only differences, obviously, are that red line here and the GTI badge here. And of course, down the side, you get 18-inch dual-tone alloy wheels with a beautiful diamond-cut finish, as well as a red GTI badge on the fender, again, to mark it out as the GTI. Aside from that, however, down the side, there is very little to tell you that this is the performance model. That said, though, I do quite like this flat grey exterior colour because I believe that it really sets off the red accents. Now, being a hot hatchback, practicality isn't necessarily the most important thing. But then again, the majority of buyers today, though they may be a little bit more individualistic, may still want a degree of practicality from their cars. Now, before we get to that, let's continue talking about the exterior. Now, at the rear, you get these redesigned full LED IQ lights, which look rather tasty. You do get a GTI-specific rear bumper with a couple of real exhaust pipes, though unfortunately, this car is not quite as raucous and noisy as the Mark 7.5 that it replaces. Now, going back to practicality, behind this tailgate, you will find plenty of room, even for a family of five. There is no underfloor storage, however, even though it is easily accessible, because all the space down here is taken up by a space saver spare wheel. I guess you could hide a couple of things down there, but really, you shouldn't have to. The amount of space back here is more than enough, and of course, if you need more space, the rear seats fold 60-40 to allow for better space. There is even a pass-through in the middle should you just have longer items and still need to carry two passengers. Now, for the individuals, they will certainly appreciate this interior. These seats are very cosseting and everything is centered around the driver to ensure the driver knows that they are the most important person in the vehicle. You also get this lovely chunky GTI steering wheel with perforated leather right where you'd be gripping the steering wheel with obviously paddle shifters at the rear. It also helps, of course, that this car has a fantastic interior lighting system, again, to ignite your passion and your excitement to drive. What also helps, of course, is the fact that this car comes with ventilated electric front seats, which means that you can stay nice and comfortable even if you're going on for something a little bit more exciting. And what also helps set that off is the fact that you get an excellent hi-fi system in this car, which is very punchy. Although it's a non-branded audio system, it's still pretty good. Now, personally, some of the things that I like in this car include things like the pulsating engine start-stop button, which is meant to mimic a heartbeat. I also love the little red accents around the steering wheel and even on the backs of the seats. And I also like to have the interior colour in this car set to red, because this is obviously a GTI. What I don't like, however, is that the majority of the controls in here are touch-sensitive. Aside from the buttons that you get here, everything else in this car is touch, including the temperature adjustments here as well as the volume adjustment for the center which is highly irritating because these are not only touch sensitive but they are also not illuminated including or going on with the touch sensitive buttons are the buttons here for the parking menu the mode selector and climate controls as well as the lighting buttons here which are again 
touch sensitive. This is all a little bit unnecessary and it takes away from the fun of driving, but that is what it is, right? Now, in the back of the Golf GTI, well, there is plenty of space and you do have a third climate control here for people in the back, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Because this car is about driving. So it probably wouldn't bother you that there are very large pockets, both on the top and the bottom of the seats and door holders and a nice little center armrest. And it certainly wouldn't bother you that the materials back here do not feel nearly as high quality as they do in the front. It wouldn't matter because you're in the front. Who cares about the people at the back? Mercifully though, the people at the back do get to enjoy the interior ambient lighting system, which I guess is nice to distract them for a while. Now behind the wheel of the Mark 8 Golf GTI, there are a few things that immediately stand out to me. Number one, this interior feels very different from before, with the infotainment system now sitting up high along the same sort of eye line as the uh, instrument cluster. It means that your eyes no longer have to go that far away to get to all of your relevant infotainment uh, information, things like your Android Auto, for example. But that said, I do miss the tactility of the buttons that you used to get in the Mark 7 and Mark 7.5 Golf. There is something to be said about having a button and knobs to twist and push and stuff like that in order to get the functions that you need. Having everything in the screen is really irritating, especially in a driver's car like this. It's very difficult for me to adjust my temperature, for example, because I have to take my eyes off the road in order to make sure that my finger is pressing the right touch button in order to get just the climate controls or the parking menu or even the drive mode selector, as if there wasn't any more space on the center console for them to put in a button. And it's the same thing with the lights, which is maybe even slightly more infuriating because it's taken some degree of control away from you. Now, for those of you familiar with German cars, you'll know that German cars with automatic headlights tend to be a bit uh, overzealous. By about 6 p.m. they'll switch the lights on and Malaysians will know that that's not really necessary. We'll usually turn the positioning lights on until it's a little bit darker and then we'll switch the headlights on. So the problem here is I tried to, because obviously it went to automatic mode and it tried to switch on the headlights, and so I tried to put it to just the positioning lights via pressing the mode button as you're supposed to, and then I got the positioning lights on. Okay, great, fantastic. I moved 10 feet and it automatically reverted back to automatic headlight mode. And I find that really irritating because as the driver, I'm supposed to be in charge of the car. I'm supposed to be the one making decisions and that is really irritating. And going back to the climate controls, because they're so fiddly and finicky, you just end up leaving them in automatic, which, unfortunately, also turns off the air recirculation, which is fine if you're driving on an open road. It's not so great when you're stuck in traffic, particularly when you're behind a truck, because then all you get is the smell of diesel. Now, this niggles aside, Perhaps the biggest thing that we need to talk about is the drive because this is a new Golf. A Golf GTI is all about the drive and surely Volkswagen wouldn't want to mess that up. Again, Mark IV Golf. <clears throat> now, for the most part, it is still pretty good. You still have this variable ratio steering which allows for less steering input and a more direct feel, which is always very nice. You still get an EA888 engine up front, but it's now paired to a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox with power going to the front wheels. And helping to put that power down is an XDS front differential, ensuring that the power goes to the wheel with the most amount of grip. All well and good. The only trouble is, in a bid for civility, I suspect, a degree of drama has been taken away from the Golf. I loved the Mark 7 Golf GTI and then the Mark 7.5. But this car, yes, it's more comfortable and it's slightly more refined, sure. But it seems to have lost a little bit of drama. There is now even less noise from the engine and the exhaust. And all the noise that you do hear comes from this sports sound, which is a simulated noise in order to give you some degree of something and i just find that really disingenuous it's acceptable on say a 5 series bmw or a 3 series bmw for that matter but this is a performance car this is gti i should get real noise this car should be noisy as standard and i just 
find that kind of irritating. Now, in terms of the drive itself, it still changes direction like a scared kitten. It's so very agile and so very lethe and it's got so much grip, this car. It's just a fantastic thing to drive. Um, but eh, I, I feel like a lot of it is a bit simulated now. The steering wheel, for example, in sports mode is heavy, yes, but it's not heavy in a natural way. It's heavy in a very unnatural sort of fashion, which I find a bit odd. Um, and then there's the engine itself. The EA Triple Eight in the Golf GTIs, at least, have been known for their whip snap response. But now it's slow almost. There's a delay between when I put my foot down and when anything actually happens. And again, this is okay in a passenger car. This is okay in a Passat, for example. But it's not quite so acceptable in a GTI because when you request that power, you could be in the middle of a corner. You could need that power just as and when to maintain the perfect balance of the car and when the car doesn't give that power to you it's just irritating now what's slightly less irritating however is the fact that because this car is now locally assembled we get nice things like ambient lighting for example we now get ventilated front seats although the passenger seat remains manual which i still think is a bit of a crime we also get memory functionality for the driver and that's all really nice however we've lost some stuff like power folding mirrors i can get power folding mirrors in a myvi i can't get it in a golf gti and what i also find is a bit of a loss from a personal perspective is that the old car used to have the word GTI lettered, sort of embroidered into the headrest. Yeah, we don't get that in this anymore. And I feel like all of these little erosions to the GTI have just kind of taken a little bit of sheen away. This used to be the everything car. Anyone who's owned a Mark 7 or a Mark 7.5 will tell you that their Golf GTI does everything. It's the sports car, it's the family car, it's the long distance hauler, it's the in-town driver. It does everything. But I feel like this car now just isn't that special anymore if you're looking for a hot hatchback that is truly the sharpest tool to drive i hate to say it but the mercedes amg a35 saloon and definitely the a45 s hatch are better to drive then you've got the m135i if you can stretch to that and that's just brilliant and this just feels like it's lacking something the Golf GTI has always had a je ne sais quoi about it, an ineffable quality that made it the best hot hatchback that money can buy. But unfortunately, it seems to have lost that charm. I'm not sure what it was, but I know that it's gone. And for a Golf GTI, and what's left, really? So as I said earlier, if you're looking for the very sharpest hot hatchback, that money can buy, you may be better served by a Mercedes A45S, or if you can live with a saloon body style, a Mercedes AMG A35. If you want something that's a bit more special, um, I think TC Euro cars may still have some Renault Sport Megans available, and if they don't, tough. And uh, overall, it is slightly disappointing. I think maybe, maybe, Volkswagen has reserved a little bit of that verve for the Golf R, so I guess we'll have to wait and see when we get that on test to find out. In any case, that's been our review of the Volkswagen Golf GTI Mark 8. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon so you're notified every time we make a new upload. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care, stay safe. Jangan bodoh.